So this is going to be my kind of cream eyeshadow declutter. Um, I have the ones that are in the pot form over here on the left and the sticks. I have a handful of stick cream shadows as well. So I'll just go ahead and split these up and spread them out and we'll go through them really quick. Okay, so here are all of my potted cream shadows. I think I counted that there are 13 of them all right here. I do have one more of the Maybelline color tattoos. That one is in Tough as Taupe, but I have that one set aside in a project pan and I actually use that one for my eyebrows. So that's not essentially what I'm talking about today, but we're gonna focus on the rest of these here. This one up here at the top left, this one is the Christian Dior Fusion Mono Shadow. This one's in 821 Shimmery. And this one is really pretty. It's very subtle though, so I will keep this one for now, but um, I don't get a lot of use out of this. I really need to use it a tiny bit more. Then next up I have a Chanel Illusion d'Ombre. This one is in number 84 Epitone. This one is really gorgeous. I like that this one almost has like a green tint to it. It's like a green, very slight silvery green color. Maybe you'll be able to see it in a swatch here. If I put a little. I don't know how much that green is picking up, but that is a little swatch of it there. They have a ton of shimmers in them, so definitely going to be keeping this one around. I need to use this one a little bit more because I don't want this one to dry out because these are crazy expensive. This last one over here that was at the top right, this one is another one of the Chanel Illusion de Ombres. This one's in New Moon. I think it is number, number 97 New Moon, and this one's more of like a coppery kind of rose gold sort of color. It's really pretty. These are really nice in the sunlight. Um, I did a swatch of that one there. That one you can see has a little bit more sparkle to it. But like I said, I'll probably keep this one as well. Okay, I actually went ahead and took all the caps off the rest of them, just so you could see. I wanted to run over them really quickly, and then I'll start pulling some out to declutter. Like I said, the top one was from Dior. It's one of the Fusion Mono eyeshadows to the Chanel Illusion de Ombres. All the Maybelline color tattoos. I have some of the limited edition shades and some from the permanent line. And then I have a MAC Paint Pot right here in Painterly. Um, a MAC Fluid Line, one of the Butter London Glaze and Eye Glosses, one of the Cream Shadows from 100% Pure, and then one of the e.l.f. Long Lasting Lustrous Eyeshadows. So with Hibiscus Heartbreak right over here, this one was limited edition, but it's like a pink. It has a little bit of a purple and a gold shift to it as well. I really like this one. I'll be hanging on to this. I do reach for it quite a bit. There's a bit of a dip going in this. And then the next one, I think this one came from the same line as that Hibiscus Heartbreak. This one is Black Orchid, and I I have issues with this. It's a bit cooler toned. It looks like just a silvery taupe kind of shade, but it does have a slight purple tone to it, and it doesn't really pull purple on the eyes. It always looks kind of odd when I wear this. There is a swatch of it right there. I'm not sure if any of the purple is going to really come out in this lighting, but it's a little disappointing. So I think this one is definitely going to be being decluttered. So we will put him over here on the right. Next up, I have another Maybelline color tattoo. This one is Seashore Frost. I actually really like this one. As you can see here, it has a lot of different colors in it. I finished one of these off in a project last year, I do believe, and then I had a sweet subscriber. She sent me a second one of these, so I was very happy about that. This is limited edition, and I don't think that you can find it anywhere, but this is really cool. Essentially, you could put any shadow over the top of this. It has a green color to it. There's aqua, blue, pink, a little bit of purple, yellow. I mean, everything is in this. Right now, you can probably only see like a teal gold possibly, but it's really pretty and like I said, you can wear anything over the top of this. Whatever you put over the top of it, it'll pull the tones out of the cream base. So this one I'm gonna hang on to. Then I have this guy here. This one is from the regular line. This one is number 80, Creamy Beige, and it's kind of like a taupe, but it's a warm taupe, I would say. If you have not tried putting these in your eyebrows. If you have a lot of them and you don't get a lot of use out of them for like a shadow base, I suggest trying them in the brows. I have the shade Tough as Taupe and I wear that one in the brows all the time. And I have black hair, so it's a really nice, cool 
shade. This one is great if you have really light blonde hair that has a warm tone to it, maybe like a strawberry blonde, but I don't wear this one as much anymore for a cream shadow base and it's way too light to use in my brows. I do enjoy this one. It's still really creamy, but I think I'm going to be decluttering this one just because I don't reach for it hardly at all. So this guy I think is going to be going. The last Maybelline color tattoo that I have here this one is, I think they've discontinued this. This one is in number 30, Pomegranate Punk. As you can see there, it's kind of like a cranberry shade. I am conflicted about this because it has been discontinued and it's really hard to get your hands on. It's really pretty. I only wear this in the fall time, essentially. I was thinking I would declutter it, but I think I might hang on to this for the rest of this year and maybe declutter it next year, possibly. I want to get one more season of wear out of it. So I initially was going to declutter this one, but I think I'm going to keep this for now. Then I have my MAC Painterly Paint Pot. I love this thing. I wear this almost every single day. I've been using this for almost, I'd say just over a year and a half straight, almost every day, and I still haven't hit the bottom of the glass. Um, I've used up a MAC paint pot in Nubile before, but I've never finished up one of these. I think this is my new favorite eyeshadow base, so a lot of these really don't get the love that they used to because this one has taken over everything. So definitely hanging on to this one. This next one is also from MAC. This is a fluid line and these are typically worn as a gel liner. Uh, Black Track is one of their famous gel eyeliners, but this one, it's in a light enough shade. It's in Catch My Eye. This has been limited edition. They've discontinued it, but they do bring it back every now and again. This is probably my all-time favorite eyeshadow if I want to wear just something really easy, one shadow all over the lid and call it done. It's like a taupey gray shade, but it does have gold reflex and sparkles in it. And I've used up one of these entirely in the past. And this is my backup. There is a little swatch of Catch My Eye. And like I said, it's one of my favorite cream shadows. So I'm definitely hanging on to this guy. This next one here, this is from Butter London. This is one of the glaze and eye glosses. And this is really cool. This is an interesting formula. It's not like the other ones. This one is almost like a jello consistency, but it's gorgeous. It has that kind of MAC blue-brown pigment thing going on where it shifts that kind of duochrome from that mauve shade to like a green aqua kind of sparkle. I don't know if you can pick up the colors on my finger. It's kind of like Urban Decay's Solstice shadow. That is oil slick right there. It looks really pretty. I even did a get ready with me uh, with this one. Maybe I'll link it up in the cards or something, but it's really gorgeous. This lighting isn't doing it justice, but definitely hanging on to this guy. It's, it's really pretty. This next one, I got this from Octoly, the Octoly website. I was really interested in 100% pure products. This is their fruit pigmented eyeshadow in the shade Java. I did a, you know, try on first impressions video with this product and I've also used it a handful of times since then, but I have so many issues with this product. First of all, it's extremely sheer. It looks really nice swatched out on the finger, but when you're putting it on your eye, you can barely see it. You have to build it up like crazy. And then not only does it wear horribly throughout the day for me, but it also creased and it was just a smudgy mess. So this one, unfortunately, as much as I wanted to give it a couple more shots, I think I'm going to let this one go. I was just a little disappointed with this. I have tried out a couple 100% pure products that I absolutely enjoyed, but this one unfortunately just does not work with my skin on my eyelids or maybe my skin's too dry for it to work or something, but this one unfortunately is going to be decluttered. The very last one down here on the bottom. I love this one, but I think I might be decluttering this one just for the fact that I've had it around for so long. This is one of the e.l.f. Long Lasting Lustrous Eyeshadows. This is in the shade Soiree. You can see I've hit pan on this guy here. This is a really pretty color. It's like a very mauve pink shade. It's a little bit more of a moussey consistency than like a Maybelline color tattoo. It's really nice and really pretty on the eyes. It has a ton of sparkle to it. That is it there. You're not really picking up as much of the sparkle as it has in it, but it definitely has a ton of sparkle. This one's really gorgeous and I, I would keep it, but I've had this one around, I think, 
for three years. In 2018, I think it'll be three years. So I think I'm going to be getting rid of this one. I wouldn't mind repurchasing this in the future, actually, because it is such a pretty shade. Actually, you know what? I think what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get rid of the Maybelline Color Tattoo in Pomegranate Punk and I will keep the e.l.f. long-lasting lustrous eyeshadow in Soiree. I think I'll just swap these two and get rid of this guy just because it's a little bit darker, a little bit more difficult to work with with lighter shades and I like the sparkle in the e.l.f. one a little bit better. So I, I think that's what we're gonna do. We'll keep the e.l.f. one, we'll get rid of the Maybelline color tattoo. So I'm gonna put the caps on the tops of these. So after I rearranged everything and made my final decisions, I'm keeping these nine over here on the left and I'm gonna be getting rid of these four over here on the right. The one 100% pure one and then these three Maybelline color tattoos. I, I really like the Maybelline color tattoo formula, don't get me wrong, but I just don't reach for these and this guy is the main culprit, that's the main problem, the MAC Painterly Paint Pot. I just reach for this one more so than anything else. So that's not too bad. I think that's a quarter of them that I'm getting rid of, just over a quarter. So I will set these aside. And actually, now that I've taken these guys out, all of my cream shadows fit nicely in my little container here. And I can lay this one flat now, uh, that Butter London one, just so it doesn't uh, move around. So anyway, I'm really happy about that. That worked out really nice, actually. So we'll set this over here. Now I have all of my stick cream eyeshadows and color bases. So I'll go ahead and take these out of the container here and go over what I have. Now these, it's gonna be kind of hard to see. I can't get my camera any closer without it being on a stand. I don't think I'm gonna do very well in this category. I only know of like one that I'm getting rid of, but we'll go through them and I'll kind of talk about each one. So this one over here on the left, this is my NYX Jumbo Eye Pencil in Milk. It's a classic. Um, I was considering getting rid of this one just because I don't reach for it very often, but I just picked up the Kat Von D Saint and Center palette, and I think this will be a nice addition to that palette. Really bright eyeshadows benefit from having this white base, so uh, I was thinking about getting rid of it, but I think we'll hang on to it. I think I'll pull it out and reach for it a little bit more frequently with that new palette. Uh, then I have the... Whoa, don't roll away. And this next guy here, this is the Mali Shadow Stick Extra. This one's in champagne. I initially thought that this would be more of a cooler toned champagne shade, but this one has a little bit of gold. It's like a very light gold color. That is champagne from Mali right there. It's really looking gold in the lighting here, but I have issues with this. I know a lot of people like these. Uh, Emily Noel 83 really enjoys these. I find that when I apply this to the eye, I have to do a handful of passes over it, but I really don't have that much left. That's all that I have left in this one. So I think I'll keep it around and just use it up. This one was sent to me through the Octoly website from Mally. So I, I don't dislike it and it doesn't crease on me, but sometimes the little shimmer pieces in this one will kind of bunch up in the crease, but not the actual shadow itself, if that makes sense, just the little glitter pieces. So I've used a little bit out of here. I'll continue to use it. I haven't fully made up my mind if I would ever repurchase one of these, but for the time being, I'll hang on to it. Then here's one from Makeup Forever. This was in a project last year, I do believe, but this is the Aquamatic Cream Shadow Stick. This one's in I-30. If you didn't know, these have a little sharpener at the bottom to always keep the tip really pointed and sharp, but this one's a really lovely color. That is how much I have left in here. It's just like a very nice kind of metallic lime, yellowy green sort of color. It's gorgeous. I just don't wear this kind of color very often. Like I was saying with that Kat Von D palette, I definitely think I'll be reaching for this one a little bit more. I think there's a lime green in that one. This does not budge. You, you'll struggle to get this off your hand or off your eyes at the end of the day, unless you have a waterproof eye makeup remover. But like I said, it does have a slight sheen to it. I don't know if you can pick up on that. I love this thing. I can't, I don't have the heart in me to get rid of it yet. So then I have two of these by Terry Ombre Black Star cream shadows. I'll start with this one. I got this one first. This one is in Bubble Glow number 17. They, these both came from the Octoly website, by the way, but Bubble Glow is kind of a warmer pink, I would say. I don't know. It's a pink with very 
small shimmers in it. It's really hard to swatch out with my left hand, but that is Bubble Glow. These are so soft. I don't think you're gonna be able to pick up the sparkles in it, but it does have sparkles in this product. Um, this is a really nice shadow stick. I don't feel like these come with a ton of product, but I think they actually come with the same amount, essentially, as the Laura Mercier ones, but these are just a touch pricier. But I do, I do like them. I like the formula. So I guess I'll hang on to this one. I've been using this with the Toasted Shadow out of the Urban Decay Naked Palette, because I've been trying to pan that this year. And it's been helpful because that'll pull out some of the pink tones in that shade. So I'll hang on to it for the time being. The other by Terry Ombre Black Star is in number five, Misty Rock. And this one's gorgeous. Out of the two, I would definitely recommend this one. I've gotten a lot more use out of this guy. Let me roll it up so you can see the color. It kind of reminds me of Laura Mercier's Caviar Stick in Amethyst, that kind of tone to it. It's like a taupey, shimmery mauve. It has like a hint of purple, almost. That is Misty Rock there, and it's definitely not showing up as gorgeous as it is in person but it's it's definitely got more of a purple tone than is showing up. I can put this one all over the lid and then blend it out so it's a little bit softer and then run this just against the lash line and it actually looks really pretty and it looks like you used more than just one cream shadow with the look. So I will hang on to this one for the time being. Um, I, I like combining these two actually, these two by Terry Ombre Black Stars. So this isn't going as well as I had hoped, but anyway, next up I have some of the Julep Eyeshadow 101s. When I ordered these from the Octoly website, I had picked out the taupe shimmer shade and they had sent me this one and I didn't even know that they were gonna send it to me. But as it turns out, I'm actually really happy that they sent me the second one because I actually like that one more than I like the taupe one, which is kind of strange. But uh, let's start with this. So the taupe one, the taupe shimmer, as the name sounds, it's a little bit fatter and shorter product-wise than, say, the Laura Mercier caviar sticks or any of those that we've talked about earlier, but I like the feeling of these. Uh, the texture feels nice on the eyelids. This taupe one, for some reason, there's something about it. I don't know if it's the sheen in this product. It's kind of the same as that Maybelline color tattoo, the one in Black Orchid. Something about just the tone of it on my eyes, I don't like it. So this one, unfortunately, I am going to be getting rid of. I'll pass this on to like a niece or my daughter or something. I'll see if my mother might want it. I don't know. On the other end of these, which is kind of nice, they do have this little smudgy foam applicator here. I found that when I try and use this to blend out the shadows, it does kind of pick up the shadow that you put down. So I don't use those little things. I just use my finger to blend them out in case you have one of these and you're struggling with that little applicator blender thing. I would just say skip that part. So taupe shimmer is actually going to be decluttered. And then this other one, this is in pearl shimmer. And I really enjoy this one. I've used this one a little bit more than taupe shimmer. I really like this one at the inner corner of the eye. It's just an inner corner highlight. This has the prettiest tone to it. I think because this one has that kind of sheen to the product, it just catches the light in the right way. Um, but with it being, that sheen being in the taupe one, I, I think it just doesn't work well for my eye color or my skin coloring or something. Maybe if you had a warmer skin tone, the taupe one might work better for you. It almost has like a warmer undertone to it. It's very strange, but anyway, keeping the pearl shimmer, I love this one as the inner corner highlight, like I said. I have two full-size Laura Mercier caviar sticks left over, and I have a handful of these smaller ones. How many do I have here? Two, four, six of the small ones, two of the large ones. I'll just run through the colors really, really quickly. Um, I have the full size in Sugar Frost. I'll do a little swatch for you. So this is Sugar Frost. I like this one paired with essentially any shadow. It's a light enough base that it will brighten a little bit, but it also has a little bit of a sheen and sparkle to it that looks really nice by itself as well. So that is Sugar Frost right there. Has a ton of shine to it. I really love this one. So definitely keeping that. And then I also have Moonlight. And this one is gorgeous. It's the same kind of color family, but this one has a little bit more of like a taupe 
taupiness to it. I don't have very much of this one left. That's all I have left in here. It is broken at the base. So I really like Moonlight and I like Amethyst. Those are my probably top two favorites. So that is Moonlight right there. The one that's just a touch darker than Sugar Frost. Just has a really nice sheen to it. These, you can put these all over the lid, wear them by themselves. You can put shadows over the top of them. You can dab these over the top of dry eyeshadows. You can buff them into the crease, blend them under the bottom lash line, put them in the waterline, and you can even use them as an eyeliner against the lash line if you just smudge them up against the lash line if you have a dark enough shade. Uh, moving on to some of the smaller ones. I have this guy here. This is Au Naturel. And this is one of the new matte versions that she has out. By the way, if you get one of these little mini ones, they actually have half the amount of product that the full sizes do. So even though they don't look like they have very much, they actually do. This one's really pretty. This reminds me of Max Painterly paint pot. Um, I'll put this one at the front here just because it's a lighter shade. It's just a touch darker than say Painterly paint pot from MAC, but this one looks really pretty on the skin. It kind of resembles the creamy beige from Maybelline Color Tattoo, but creamy beige is a little bit darker. Oh, Natural from Laura Mercier has just a little bit more, it's almost like a pink undertone to it. I can see some pink tones in that and some taupey shades, like a caramel kind of tone as well, but I like this. I like this a lot. This is a new one. I think this showed up in a Sephora play box. Uh, then we have Amethyst. Like I said, this one's one of my favorites. This is um, similar to that Misty Rock. Where is Misty Rock? Right there. That is Misty Rock from By Terry. And if you see here, Misty Rock from By Terry has little sparkly shimmers in it that pick up. And this one doesn't have those sparkly shimmers. It just has more of a sheen to the product. So I like them both. Honestly, um, I feel like Amethyst has just a touch more of a purple tone to it, but it's gorgeous. They're all gorgeous, actually. <laughs> So definitely hanging on to this. I've actually used up the full size of Amethyst and I only have that little guy left. Then I have Coco. This is one that you could use against the lash line and wear it as like a liner. I've tried that a little bit. That's what I have left in here. I don't wear this very often. I don't wear brown liner as frequently as I probably should. It's very smooth and creamy and rich. That is it there. I'll try and reach for this a little bit more. I mean, this is a really rich chocolatey kind of tone and when you smudge it against the lash line it really doesn't look brown um it's not like a chocolatey brown it's more of a deeper tone so uh, i don't know for the time being i'll hang on to this i think next year i'm going to focus on some of my stick my laura mercier shadow sticks a little bit because i have so many of them this one is in moonlight this little guy here and I don't know why I started using this one when I have the full size. So I'll probably finish off the full size first of Moonlight and then I'll go on to this one. So I'm still hanging on to it because I really love this color from her line. Then I have Rose Gold. And this one's not particularly a favorite of mine. Oh no, this one's broken too. Dang it. So that is Rose Gold right there. And it just has a little bit more warmth to it than say Sugar Frost or Moonlight. As you can see there, that was rose gold right here. It almost looks gold in this lighting, but it does have just the slightest hint of a pink to it. So I'll hang on to it. This one's not my favorite, but there's not much in here whatsoever. So I don't think it'll be too difficult to finish that one off. Then I have this one here. I think this is in khaki. Most of the writing on this one smudged off. That is how much I have left in khaki. And let me do a quick swatch of this guy as well. I feel like in this lighting it's pulling more green than it has, but it's hard to wear. Um, I'm contemplating getting rid of this one, but I think for the time being I'll hang on to it. If I haven't reached for this by, say, the middle of next year, I'll get rid of it. I told you guys initially this category probably isn't going to be getting rid of much, but... Anyway, this last one is from Bobbi Brown. I got this one out of a Sephora play box. This is in the shade Golden Pink. And if I remember right, I think this one is very similar to Rose Gold. That is Golden Pink from Bobbi Brown. So I'll put this underneath the, oh, this one actually is a little bit brighter than the Laura Mercier Rose Gold. 
Look at that. So this is Golden Pink from Bobbi Brown. And that one is Rose Gold from Laura Mercier. Huh. That's interesting. Those two are really similar and I should probably get rid of one of them. But I'm just thinking uh, there's not a ton of product in these and they go relatively quickly if you're using them on a daily basis. So maybe I'll just pull both of these into a project and count it as like one item. Maybe I'll do that and then they can be finished off. Anyway, a little bit of a disappointment in this category. I only decluttered one out of all of these. It's kind of sad, but anyway, maybe you got an idea of what to purchase based off of the swatches here. I hope that was helpful. These over here on the left, I'm keeping all of these. These over here on the right, I will be getting rid of. So kind of a bummer that I only got rid of five, but I'm happy that there are five that are scooted out of the way so that I have more room and more time to focus on the ones that I do enjoy. So anyway, <laughs> I'm sorry it wasn't more exciting. Um, I really appreciate you guys watching. I'll go ahead and link some of my other declutter videos down in the description box in case you were interested. I really appreciate you guys watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.